Um, I, I use the oils with confidence. Um, I know that the, one of the biggest issues in small animals, and especially in cats, is that they do not do well with synthetics, um, and they do not do well with adulterated um, products. So the fact that we're using something that we know is very safe and that doesn't have those risk factors, we've already um, gotten over that first hurdle of safety in small animals because we are using something that is so pure. Thank you. Dr. McKesson. I have a, a picture of uh, my daughter has, I wish we had it here today, of uh, a cat standing over the diffuser as it's in. Okay? <laughs> my theory on this is if it's good enough for me and you use some common sense, you certainly can use it in your pets. Fantastic. What about for our, our DIYers out there, you know, home cleaning, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, Dr. Yamamoto, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Well, the big concern as a veterinarian is that when we apply, say, any sort of synthetic product that you can find um, in your grocery store or local store, and we're applying it on the ground, we're applying it on our counters, think about your dogs, your cats are walking on that, and in turn will probably be ingesting some of that off of their paws after you've just cleaned. And here you are trying to make the your little home a, a safer world, but in all reality, that is a, a potential toxin that's being ingested. Whereas if we're utilizing some of these DIY products, you know, the, any of the on-guard cleaners, I feel much better about my dogs and cats walking around the house, my children walking around barefoot, because it is safe. And we've proven that it's safe. And even if they do ingest it, I'm okay with that. So I'm all for DIY products because, again, we're utilizing very safe oils and utilizing doTERRA products. Okay. So we've established it's safe to use them ourselves. How about using them on our animals? Uh, Dr. Miafezo. Topical use of doTERRA essential oils is perfectly safe. In fact, it's a very common way to apply oils readily. Can you use them daily in your yeah, practice? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Dr. Fisher? Yeah, I agree. I use them daily in my practice, topically. Um, I do find that we have to be a little bit more cautious with how we use them. I will use them more as I would use with my five-year-old daughter as opposed to um, using higher concentrations that I would use with myself. So usually I will use things that are about a one to three percent solution with pets. So something like three to six drops in a 10 mil um, of carrier oil would be my go-to for, for how I dilute before I apply to the pets. Okay. Dr. McCaskill. Safety is always an issue for, for animals, so no matter what the conditions, use good sense, follow the instructions, follow the instructions. As we advance in this program, you'll get more direction, you'll get more good information, but yes, just be careful. It's wonderful, follow the instructions. Um, my only add to that would be that you know your pets. And, and that's what it is. And we can sit up here as veterinarians and talk about all of our knowledge, but the reality is, is you are with them every day. If you are utilizing an essential oil that is deemed safe and your cat is vomiting or your dog's like, nope, I'm, I'm walking away, use common sense. You know them. That's them telling you, this one's not working for me. So please understand, you, you have to take our recommendations and, and as this grows there will be additional recommendations but you know your pet best fantastic well i'd, I'd love to get into some kind of the, the best oils to use but you know we we had a post that went up and uh, there was a lot of questions on the do not use list uh, one of the the top questions was around tea tree or melaleuca uh, dr rourke you know what are your feelings around that Andrew, why do you always ask me the hard questions? <laughs> um, Maluka, tea tree oil, very, very controversial in small animals, right? Totally use it all the time with horses, goats, cattle, chicken, awesome, no problems. But when we're talking about dogs and cats, they have a different type of metabolism than, say, we do or even other species of animals do. And so it is one that you do need to be a little bit cautious with. Um, I think probably all of us have used Maluka in our practices in very difficult, specific type of scenarios. Um, however, when we're addressing Maluka tea tree oil with the general public, we um, really have to recommend that 
since they metabolize it differently, it's excreted from their system. It takes longer to excrete it from their system. And some of the toxicities that we've seen with tea tree oil have to do with purity and potency, as well as this, this metabolism factor. And so you really need to take that into consideration. And we have so many other beautiful oils, guys. Like you can totally use something that's a little bit safer um, as opposed to tea tree oil when you're addressing different situations. And that's really what I would recommend is maybe just stay away from it. Um, if you're using it at a 1% dilution, you know, once every once in a while, it's probably gonna be okay. But it is one that you do need to be a little bit more careful with, Andrew. Dr. Fisher, what would you use in its place? So I typically will use geranium a lot. So anytime that I have a blend that I would use Maluka with my family or with my daughter, if I'm making the same blend for my pets, I'll usually use geranium instead of that. Or another great one that has a lot of the same properties that we would want from Maluka, um, I'll use Arbor Vitae instead because it will give me some of those same results. So I feel much more confident recommending in the general public that they use those oils, although I agree with Dr. Work. There are certain situations where if I wasn't getting the results, I would use tea tree. But since we have other oils that are so effective, why not use something that we don't have to worry as much about? And so that's my go-to, geranium and arbor vitae. Okay, thank you. Well, I think we can see here we, we posted, or Emily posted some questions uh, to the public, and we literally had thousands come in, and we were, uh, the executive team were, were surprised at the level of excitement amongst uh, so many thousands of people. And so I'm gonna hit on some few uh, tips and, and things that we can really do practically you know, today with our, our own pets. Um, Dr. Frezzo, um, fleas and ticks, uh, that was a, a, big one, a big question that came through. Any practical advice uh, for us on that? So fleas and ticks are a universal concern among pet owners. And in New Jersey, we have to protect our pets from fleas and ticks all year round. There are several oils that are safe and effective against fleas and ticks. To name a few, Arbor Vitae, Geranium, Lemongrass, Cedarwood, and Rosemary. Now doTERRA has prepared for us a very convenient blend in a spray called Terra Shield. And I recommend this oil, this blend commonly. I am confident and comfortable with using Terra Shield in our pets. metabolism, um, some oils are metabolized a little bit differently than other oils. And so you may need to reapply the Terra Shield periodically to maintain the same level of protection for our pets. And an ap application, you know, so you mentioned the oils, so what's the now what's of, of that? So how to do it? I would simply mist your pet lightly and then pet your pet, rub those oils to distribute particularly on the legs and the underbelly. Yeah. Alternatively, some pets might prefer that you put the oils in the palm of your hand. Rub your hands together and then pet. Um, I believe that we should keep the application of essential oils to be really positive. So we want a really positive experience with our pets so that it is welcoming, inviting, and, and it's a good bonding experience. Nice. Well, another question that came through, uh, you know, one of the top questions around anxiety in our pets, and uh, whether it's a 4th of July celebration or maybe an encounter at the local park with perhaps a bigger dog or whatever it might be. Um, Dr. McCaskill, you sent through a lovely video, I think, of, of your own pet, and how you, uh, a demonstration of how you calm your patients in, in your practice. And um, I think we have this video coming up here in a few moments. Would you like to sort of talk us through kind of what you do? Absolutely. Okay, uh, this is my uh, veterinary uh, acupuncture and integrative medicine practice in Baton Rouge. This is my pup, and the tech you see is my daughter. So, if you'll see, we have a diffuser that runs continuously while we're working. Continuously. We always use serenity and lavender, both calming, work well. If we have a situation where the, we think we've got a really stressful day, we'll also add frankincense. Uh, as you notice, as far as Fusing's number one, we have it going on all the time. Let me make one comment about that. It's not only good for the pet, but it's good for the doctor, it's good for the tech. And, <laughs> so, it's all, it's good for everyone. As far as application to it, you can certainly mix it one or two drops of uh, coconut oil, one or 
two drops of your uh, pure oil, whether it be uh, lavender, for example. I normally get the animal to try to smell it. You can see Kaki as she's turning her head. She wasn't crazy about it. However, you can apply it on the tips of the ears. Make sure you do not apply it in the ear. Eyes and ears is a no-no. Eyes and ears is a no-no. And put it on the paws in between the, the inner digital pads works well. And if you're going to do it abdominally also back in those areas because rapid absorption is a little quicker back there because you don't have the hair. And if you are using the hair, to go against the grain of the hair. I see. You kind of let the, the animal you know, kind of Absolutely. accept it. Uh, Dr. Yamamoto, um, seasonal threats. I know you're from California. Uh, you know, uh, a year of seasonal threats there. Would you like to kind of talk us through, uh, I think, the video you sent through of your, your very own uh, Bella. You know, it's such a cutie. Absolutely. So um, as far as seasonal threats, unfortunately in Southern California, we don't have many seasons. So it's kind of year round. So what I've done here with Bella, that I, I, prior to this video starting, I had a drop of lemon, peppermint, and lavender, and approximately a half of a tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil. And very similar to what Dr. McCaskill had done with his dog, is applied in between the toes, even on top of the pads, inside the ears and the um, along the tips down her backside working it into the hair and again along her abdominal area where she tends to have more issues um, so in doing this I mean, we're, we're going to be applying potentially one two three times a day for our larger dog she's approximately 60 pounds you may want to do a little bit lessened uh, amount or additional dilution for smaller animals um, with that, that same concoction, the lemon, lavender, and peppermint, you can do in a veggie capsule for your larger dogs, one to two times a day. With our cats, we change up a little bit the citrus. We worry about getting uh, ingested with cats. And again, they're very fastidious as far as grooming themselves. So we change the lemon to lemongrass. And we can also incorporate frankincense in cats. Very similar how we did with Bella, just topical application. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Fisher, another uh, question that came through is around cuts and scrapes. I know you work a lot with uh, sport dogs, so you're very familiar with this protocol. Would you like to talk uh, to that? Absolutely. So a lot of my patients are very agile with the work that they do, but that doesn't mean that they're careful with their body. So I have a lot of my clients put together a little first aid kit for their pets that they carry with them when they're doing a lot of hiking and things like that. And so it will contain a blend that has um, frankincense and lavender in it. Both of those are very safe for pets and are very great for any sort of um, small cuts and abrasions because it's very nice and soothing to the skin. Um, it also helps prevent some of that itch feeling that they get that would cause pets to then start lick and chew at themselves, which can make um, any of those uh, issues a lot worse. And then I'll also like to add in some myrrh uh, because of the cleansing and soothing properties of that. Helichrysum, especially if there's a little bit of bleeding and because it's so fantastic for skin root rejuvenation. And then this is one of the times that I'd use geranium as well. So that's a blend that I commonly have people make up. And I don't always use fractionated coconut oil with that blend, just because a lot of times when we are dealing with cuts and scrapes, it's already a little bit moist. So I got a great tip from Janet Rourke um, about using uh, aloe vera and juice. So that's what I would dilute with. And it makes a nice little spray for over those areas. Fantastic. And we had a lot of questions come, come through around uh, you know, keeping the fur soft, keeping it from drying out, and um, you know, really just general overall, you know, wellness of the animal. Uh, Dr. Rock, any any thoughts on that? Yeah. So when we talk about skin health um, with uh, small animals in particular, but really any any animal, including people, um, we really have to look at the foundation of health, right? Which is, you know, in our DoTerra wellness pyramid, our um, nutrition, right? So the foundation of health is nutrition and gut health, and the, the same applies for our animal friends as well. So really what I like to do with skin health is address the food, the nutrition part of it, um, which I could talk for probably two hours on that, but I know we're limited on time. So, um, so adding supplements like omega-3 supplementation as well as digestive enzymes, Terrazyme works great for all species, um, and uh, probiotics as well it can really help with that gut health, that foundation of health that's needed to then 
what, what, that it'll actually manifest itself in healthy skin as well. Okay. And do you advocate any any oils in addition, perhaps in the food or you know, topically? Uh... Sir, sure. Um, so overall, overall health. You can you can add frankincense. Copaiba is a great one. If you are having some digestive issues, obviously digestin is a great go-to as well. Uh, fantastic, Dr. Yamamoto. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Sorry, I would say I was very excited about the um, copaiba that came that we were introduced to last year, and that's one that I have brought in as well for um, general health, um, as Dr. Rourke had mentioned. On Guard is another one, just as far as general uh, immune system support, um, which also ties into our skin. That's a one giant organ, so we want to ensure that everything is is put together. In addition to the you know, nutrition, omega fatty acids, probiotics, yeah, adding nice. an on-guard. Nice. Well, uh, Dr. Frezzo, uh, you sent through a, a very cute video of uh, peanut um, helping us with some digestive issues or supporting a healthy digestive uh, function. Do you want to talk us through this video? So peanut is one of my patients, and he truly enjoys his oil experience. Uh, you'll see in this video, he lies down, he's ready and he asks his mom for his oils, and then he asks for more. Uh, Pina was having some digestive issues, and we corrected his diet, added supplements, and his daily application of Digestin has become quite a routine that he enjoys. He's, he's truly remarkable, and everybody loves him. His clients, I'm sorry, my clients, his parents, are so happy that he's doing <laughs> really well. He loves it. He truly does. In the end, you'll see he asks for more. He literally does. And, and, and Dr. Fisher, I know uh, also you use uh, extensively the aroma touch technique uh, with, with your animals and patients. Yeah, I primarily see a lot of rehab patients, so I'm dealing with pets that are either recovering from surgery or I see a lot of senior pets. And so if you come to my practice, you're going home with homework. So a lot of times I will get people to do some gentle massage and stretching and range of motion with their pets. And this is a time that Aroma Touch is um, a fantastic product to use. Not only does it calm the pet, so it allows them to relax a little bit more into letting you manipulate them and do some of the massage, but it also has oils that are very soothing and supporting to the muscular system. So it's one of my favorites to use from sport dogs to senior dogs. Fantastic. Well, I think we've spoken a lot about kind of our, our pets, the smaller animals. Um, Dr. Rourke, I, I know a significant part of your practice is, is larger animals, horses. Um, and you two sent through a video. Uh, I'd love for you to kind of talk through kind of how you deal with your, uh, the horses in, in your practice. This is Java. She's a warm blood. She does a venting. Uh, so we offer the oil there for her to smell. Licking and chewing is a really positive response to an oil. This is Copaiba. She's licking it off my hand here. And then um, we're going to apply it topically. So she's ingesting it. That's a flamance response. That's a very positive response to an oil. She loves it. So she's, as an eventing horse, she needs some muscle support and joint support. We just apply it topically along her spine like that and just rub it in. Anybody can do this. You do not have to be a veterinarian to do this. Um, so, and she just loves it. And this is how we apply it. What I love about um, our essential oils is that, you know, I know a lot of people were hoping for an animal line. Um, but we can actually use all of our oils with animals, and so um, I love our blends. Digest then, so good for horses to support their digestive tract. Um, you know, Aroma Touch to support the joints and muscles of our performance horses, and um, Breathe to help open up the respiratory tract. Balance, so good for grounding, especially. Um, I think Jill Winger's video mentioned balance and in tune on her horse at horse shows. So really, really good ones uh, to use with horses and, and large animals in general. Nice. Uh, Dr. Fisher, you mentioned you have uh, a three-week waiting list. Um, you know, any thoughts or ideas on either talking to our vet about using essential oils or finding, you know, a, a vet that may use holistic practices? 
Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully um, we are getting more veterinarians that are looking at a more holistic uh, view of the, of the body. As he was saying, in our practice we've been looking for another veterinarian because we're booking so far out. But I think it is still important that people be honest with their veterinarians about what they're using with their pets. I think that if you explain to them that you are using doTERRA, that it is a 100% pure product, that you know of other veterinarians that are supporting its use, it sort of helps them to to be more open to what you guys are doing at home. And there are uh, other ways that you can seek out holistic veterinarians. If you go to some of the sites like the American Holistic Veterinary Medicine Medical Association, you can often find veterinarians there. We will always talk to other veterinarians about um, how to use the essential oils and how to do that support. And I think that nowadays there are way more veterinarians that are becoming open to it. I've been doing holistic medicine for 14 years and I can tell you that 14 years ago I did not get any referrals. And now I'm getting lots of referrals from other veterinarians. I'm getting lots of questions about what I do and how it can benefit pets. So I don't think we have to be as worried about being honest with the veterinarian that you're working with about what you're doing with the oils and hopefully that will get them interested and they'll get the look at some of the research especially with all the new research that doTERRA is going to be coming out with it's going to make it a lot easier for you guys to work with your veterinarians yeah and I know both of you know uh, perhaps all of you but I know Dr. McCaskill you're kind of sometimes seen as the, the veterinarian of last resort sorry to say that's correct uh, a lot of my cases are referral cases, or most of my cases are referral cases, and I'm normally the last guy on the list that they come to. Uh, often I've been able to help so many pets, thank goodness, and uh, often I am the last hope for the owner. So now with the use of a new tool, especially for those pets that can't take the herbs or can't even acupuncture the animal, hopefully we'll be able to introduce the tarot essential oils as a backup plan and I can't say enough it's, I'm so excited about having a new tool in my toolbox. Great. Now Dr. Fraser, any, any closing thoughts? I'd like to leave you with a sense of peace that the doTERRA essential oils are perfectly safe they are at your fingertips you have the power and the ability within your homes to care for your pets to care for your entire family uh, with a really valuable, effective, safe product. Fantastic. Dr. Yamamoto, any closing thoughts? I would just say in regards to, um, I know there are going to be a lot of questions about um, safety and, and things of that nature. And, and one of the things, too, is as you are introducing oils into your pets, I would recommend maybe start with one oil at a time and just assess, what does my pet think about this? And then you can add in additional. So it's, it's something where, kind of like with yourselves, you're figuring out what works best for me versus what's working best for Larry, those kinds of things. Your pets are gonna be the same way. So baby steps, and then you're gonna get to a point where you are utilizing them every day just as you are on yourself. So be patient, it will happen. Great, well, we found this helpful. I'm sure we could discuss for hours, um, and I only wish we had the time to kind of get into all of the thousands of questions uh, that, you know, that have been posted, and I'm sure that you have out there in the audience, but I'm 